Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. I am Carol Howell, your host, and I'm glad you've chosen to join me today. We're going to talk about, well, these little bags I've got right here today. Yeah, and about shaking your booty. I'm all for it. Shake, shake, shake your booty. Um, I'd like to thank the sponsors for our show. Beth Crosby is my editor extraordinaire. You can reach her at editorbeth.com. And also National Association of Veterans and Families, 800-352-2919. Contact them to get help with your needs for funding for your um what you call that? Veteran. That's it. <laughs> or the spouse of the veteran. I love that you guys don't expect me to be perfect because if you do, you better watch something else. Because I'm just me. You know, it's just how it comes out. I don't do a whole lot of editing. I ain't got time for that. I got stuff I got to go do. But I try to bring you good information. I'm just looking at all the junk piled up on my desk back there. It's kind of a lot of stuff I should move around. Well, we're going to talk about shaking your booty. Shake, 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 shake your booty. Uh-huh. Well, maybe not just your booty, although that's fun. I'm going to tell you, if you can get your loved one up and they are still able to move around on their two feet safely, or maybe you need you can hold on to them and they can move around on their own two feet, put on some music and get them moving. Oh, yeah. That's going to need to be music that they like, music from their past. Put on something fast and see, can you get them moving around, shaking their booty? My mama would get down. Uh huh. And if she danced with a man, she would rub his butt every single time. I swear to you, it is the truth. I am so proud to say that. <laughs> but if they are not able to get up and dance, which I love, but if they can't do that, then how are we going to get them to move? And I got an answer for that. And guess what? It's going to get you to move in too. So first, you got to be a little bit creative. Now, this is some scrap flannel that my mama had back from quite some time ago. Inside of this is a Ziploc bag. And in the Ziploc bag, I have sand. You could put dried beans. You could put, um, what else? Uh, pebbles. No, pebbles would be too hard. Do either dried sand or, or, or yeah, dry sand for sure, <laughs> or dried beans, that works. And you can make them different weights. You might only put a quarter of a cup inside the Ziploc bag and then put the Ziploc bag in this. I sewed around it on the sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, just hot glue the edges down. It's going to work just fine. Make some that are a quarter cup, some that are half cup, some that are three quarters a cup. So we have different weights in the bags. These are holding a cup. And they are not light. I'm just going to tell you they're not. But you want to start out with a lower weight for your loved one. Maybe you need the higher weight. I don't know. Maybe it's the other way around. They may be stronger than you. If that's the case, you need to get out your lazy behind and work your arms some. I'm just saying, but I'm telling you it's the truth. <laughs> so you're going to take these bags. Think of all the ways you can use these bags. There's a ton of them. But why would you use this instead of dumbbells? Well, but that's because your sister don't like it when you call her a dumbbell. And she don't want you to use her in your, her exercise routine. <laughs> no. Because if you drop these, they don't hurt because they're soft. And your loved one's grasp might not be what it used to be. We've got arthritis. Heck, yours might be a problem. So if you drop this on the toe um, or on the leg or the arm or whatever, it's not going to hurt. It's not going to dent the floor if you drop a big dumbbell down on the floor. So it's just softer. That's my whole idea behind this. You can you take an old dish towel and make a square out of it and glue the edges. I mean, a million ways you can do it. Well, maybe not a million, but there's a bunch. So you're going to give them one, and you're going to have one, or you're going to give them two, and you're going to have two, whatever you decide to do. <clears throat> but let's just use one for right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, I've got this throat condition that some days is good, and some days just drives me crazy. So just forgive me. But we're going to take it and we're going to demonstrate for them what we want them to do. So we can say, hey, mom, take your bag and let's just hold it like this. Let's just push it out and bring it in. Push it out and bring it in. Push it out and bring it in. And if you don't say it, they're probably not going to do it. So you want to activate two parts of the brain, the part of the brain that's seeing you do it, and the part of the brain that's hearing the directions. It doubles the chances for success. And anytime we are interacting with our loved ones, we want to double their chances for success. So push it out, straighten your arms, bring it in, bend your arms, straighten your arms, bend your arms, straighten your arms, bend your arms. So maybe five or six repetitions. 
All right, we're going to shake it out. Shake. I tell you, I got to quit doing that. Y'all see all the flabby on my arms? I really do get in the pool and work my arms, too, but I digress. Okay, now, Mom, take your bag. We're going to go up above our head, down, up, down, up, down. Now, I'm not taking it all the way up because you can't see it in the camera, but I might say straighten your arms, bring it down, straighten your arms, bring it down. Five repetitions. Repetitions. You don't want to do it a whole lot because our folks lose interest very quickly. Then you go, I like your bag better than mine. Let's switch. So now maybe we've gone from the quarter cup to the half cup. We've warmed up a little bit. So maybe we're just going to do one arm curls. See, you can do one arm curls, right? Or you can help them do take it. Oh, let's see. How can I do this? And you see. Um, and go backwards with it, right? It's hard to do sitting in a chair like this. They could turn sideways or stand, whatever. You can take this um, and put it on the top of their foot, and I have no clue how I can show you that. I was just thinking, how am I going to show you the top of my foot in this camera scene? But pretend this is the foot. You're going to lay it on the top of their foot and have them raise their foot up and down, just barely off the floor, up and down, up and down. Then we're going to take it and switch it to the other foot. Up and down. Up. Heck, you can do this on their hand. I'm realizing right now this arm is much weaker for me, a condition I have, than this arm and how I really feel that. So you could do it on the top of their hand, on top of their foot. But one thing you can do while it's on the top of their foot after you've done both sides is say, I want you to figure out how to get that from that foot to that foot, but you can't use your hands. And they're going to work and work and work, and they're going to drop it 14 times before they get those feet to cooperate enough to get it over to the other foot. Hand-eye coordination, it's huge. It's difficult, so don't let them get frustrated. If you begin to see frustration, then it's time to have a snack. And that's when I want you to have off to the side somewhere. You can have a drink, or I'm trying to get my hand where you can see me. I've never figured this out. There it is. You might have their favorite drink and a healthy snack, maybe some grapes. Um, maybe sliced apple with a little bit of peanut butter. You know that's my favorite snack. Um, let's just take a break. You need a break. We've done some exercise, and you're going to sit back and take a break. Maybe while you're taking that break, you ask them questions about their past. Ask them, did they ever go to a gym and work out? Did they enjoy P.E. when they were in elementary school? What was the favorite game they played outside? Um, see what stories they have to tell you about being physically active, tying it all together. Okay, Mom, let's go back. We're going to do some more exercises. And so, we've okay, we've done this. We've done the arm curls. We've done the arm backwards. We've done the arm above the head. We've done the feet. Um, do you think they remember all that? No, they don't. It's one of the beauties of dementia. If there are anything, any beauties of dementia, this would be one of them. You're just going to do it all again, right? So we're going to do those exercises. But remember how we switched bags? Now Mom's does have a slightly heavier, heavier bag than she had before. Yeah, so that's a good thing. Do those exercises again with, with your, your L.O. When they're through and you've had that second snack, go, okay, Mom, now we're going to breathe in. I want you to breathe in real big. And you're going to make that noise. Why? Again, we want them to hear it and see it. Oh. Okay, now, Mama, the next time when you let your air out, I want you to be really loud like I was. You ready? Really loud now. We're going to breathe in. Oh. And see how active and interactive they are in that. It is quite fun. I do that very same breathing thing when I go to speak to groups quite often. I'll have everybody stand up and breathe in. And when they breathe out, they bend over and just let their arms hang. It's kind of hard to do that in a seated position, but let their arms hang. And I just let them hang there for a little bit and then slowly come back up. Be aware if we're going to go up and breathe and we're going to come down, if they're coming down with their head, they don't want to come back up real quick or they're going to get a buzz. Uh, they don't need that. So if they go down and you realize their head's gone down, go, okay, real, real, real slowly. Let's raise our head back up till you see my eyes. Probably they're not going to do that because you didn't tell them to take their face down, but it might be something that's just what they do. We want to exercise our people, and that's just an easy way to do it. And you're going to find a lots of ways you can use these little bags. And it's good for the hands if you take one and, and you put... Um, 
the beans in it especially you can put different kinds of beans like maybe some dried white beans some dried pinto beans some dried garbanzo beans they all are different sizes and different shapes and put them in loosely where it's not tightly packed then folks who have arthritis can take it and manipulate those beans and it's good for their hands they're pretty neat and what have you got invested in it a dollar easy easy peasy exercise you can do with your loved one or just get them up and shake their booty and if you can hold on to them and shake their booty it's even more fun and then do some slow dancing you're just going to so enjoy the music they're going to enjoy the music and you get to hold your loved one close i wish i could do that yes i do but you can and i want you to do that i just want to take a minute right now and say um my heart is with the family and miss pauline burgess miss burgess was one of my favorite people who I helped her move to assisted living and her son Jimmy and I work closely together and he is a big supporter of our ministry and the work that we do in so many ways and financially and emotionally and and I can call Jimmy and say hey I got this going on what do you think and and he's a good cheerleader and she went to heaven today and Jimmy called me and said Carol my mom is living with your mama now that's something to think about for me. So, Miss Burgess told everyone that I'm her friend and that I was the mayor of Charlotte. Now, I did not know I was the mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina, but according to her, I was. And then at some point, I must not have won re-election because I was no longer the mayor. <laughs> neat story. She was a neat lady, just a neat lady. All right, let's see. I'd like to thank Beth Crosby and National Association of Veterans and Families for coming along and supporting us in the work that we do. Please write me with any questions you might have, and my email address is carol at letstalkdementia.org. Our website is hidden up there is let's talk dementia.org you can write me with your questions your comments and i will either write you back or call you and and we will work together to see how we might can help you well this show as always is dedicated to the goodness of our lord and savior jesus christ and all that he does in our world all that he does in our life the things that he does that we know about and the things that we don't have a clue about but he's always working for our good, and I'm thankful for that. And it's also in memory of my sweet mama. There's my mama, Vera Jean Holder and Mr. Fred Holder. My mama did not graduate high school. She got married to my daddy when she was 15 and moved to the um, moved from the mountains of North Carolina all the way to Albuquerque, New Mexico at the ripe old age of 15. So at the age of 50-something, my mama graduated high school, and she went on to community college, and there is the picture of the graduation ceremony. Isn't that cool? She just smiling so big. We had a big old party and a cake. Any excuse to have a cake, right? Well, I hope you guys have a good day. Blessings and smiles on your day. Bye. Hey, I forgot to tell you. Be sure and share this and like it and subscribe. Thank you.